What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and it's Tuesday, and I'm holding in my hands here this beautiful onyx boa that's het for blood, het for anery type 2, and het for Honduran T positive. She is gorgeous. She produced a litter for me twice already uh, in the last three years. I got two litters from her. Uh, hopefully, she'll produce another one for me this year. I'm going to show you some of the babies she produced over this last two years, and uh, some of them were sold, but I have some really awesome coldbacks from her, and I just love this onyx bow. The onyx uh, gene, or morph as you could say, is an incomplete dominant, meaning that this is the single form of it. It's a much darker bow, as you can see, um, with a little bit of striping on the tail here. When they're babies, you can see a little bit more. And I like dark boas. I know a lot of you guys out there like them too. The IMG bow, which is the increasing melanistic gene bow, is something that everyone loves. That's a snake that gets darker and darker as it gets older. These are born dark already. In the super form, the onyx is, is, a, is a, basically a black snake, very similar to an IMG or even an eclipse boa. Um, so a lot of people also kind of connect it with the leopard gene. Um, I personally think the leopard and the onyx gene might be compatible allelic to each other, but they're certainly different genes for, for sure. They're not the same gene. Um, I've done some really cool stuff thanks to Frank Nutt, my good friend in the Netherlands, who kind of originated that uh, onyx gene. I imported a bunch of babies from him a number of years ago, and they're just starting to breed. These are dwarf boas, as you can see. This is like a ball python size. This female is full grown, is about as big as it gets. She lives, uh, I have her in a slightly bigger tub. She could probably live her whole life in a V70, a vision tub if, she, if you wanted to. So this is a great type of snake to get if you're looking to have boas you know, with the personality, the look of a boa, but a snake that doesn't get too big that needs a huge four-foot cage. So let's take a look at some of these babies and these holdbacks, and hopefully this year we can produce. I'm finally trying to produce the, the Holy Grail. I actually produced the Holy Grail last time around, and I'm going to show you that snake. The problem was it had too many genes in it, and I kind of lost uh, some of the redness that I really wanted. The anery type 2 gene, or the aneurtheristic type 2 gene, is a gene that removes red. So I produced this super red snake because the onyx bow, when you strip away the outer layer of that melanin, the, the darkness, there's red under there, almost similar to leopard. So um, if you add blood gene, if you add Honduran T positive, if you add hypo, you get a really, really red snake. And I'm going to show you some that came out like that. Um, however, if you add the anery gene on top of that, it takes away the red and you get like this white, almost ghost-like looking snake. And, we produce some really cool stuff. So let's let's go inside. As you can see, very good temperament. I mean, this this snake is very well behaved. They they take a little longer to get started with food. You got to feed them very small meals initially, but once they start eating, man, you can't stop these guys. All right, guys, this is a snake from uh, 2017 that I want to show you that I produced. Um, this is a hypo onyx boa. You can see the striped tail. That that gives us the onyx. That gives the onyx away. It's hypo in that it has reduced melanin, and it's also a type 2 aneurtheristic. Um, the hypo and the anery gene together create what's called a ghost. So this is a ghost onyx. It's also 66% het for T positive and, and uh, blood. So we're not sure if it's, if it's carrying those genes. There's a 66% chance. But as you can see, a, a lighter version of what I showed you what there was, was the mother. This is a, an onyx, but it's got that hypogene, and obviously it's got all red removed from it. So it, it almost looks, it has that ghost-like look. When it was younger, it was a lot lighter too. So um, great looking male. He's actually sold, I actually sold him. Um, I'm waiting, this guy's been <laughs> paying me off on this snake for, for way too long now. He might actually go up on the market if, if I don't get my payment for this guy, but he is probably breeder ready. So look at the size of this guy, look how small he is. This is a breeder ready. This is how small these dwarf boas are. The males will stay nice and small. I give them literally a very small mouse, maybe every week or every other week, depending on you know what I feel. And it keeps them nice and lean like this. And this guy will would love to breed right now, I guarantee it. All right, here I have a 2019 baby. This is a hypo Honduran T positive. Now the Honduran T positive, which is a, a T positive albino, in other words, there's some melanin. It's also known as a caramel uh, albino, but this is the Central American version. Okay, it's probably the prettiest T-positive 
I think, in the, all of the BOA world. The Honduran T-Positive has the most color. And this is also Onyx. You see that nice striped tail we got? So this is one copy of the Onyx gene. It's Honduran T-Positive, and it's also Hypo. So the Hypo Honduran T-Positive is known as a Sun Glow, or a T-Positive Sun Glow. So we can call it a T-Positive Sun Glow Onyx. This snake is available. And you guys can contact me. Gorgeous snake. I'm actually really thinking about keeping it because it is so gorgeous. But I can't keep everything, right? I love it. One, once again, one copy of the gene, 2019. Eating, you know, small mice, I give it maybe every other week. They're, they're not big eaters, these dwarf boas. They don't need to eat a lot. And if you feed them every other week, they actually are hungrier, believe it or not. And, and they'll grow better, I find. When you try to feed them every week, sometimes they just don't. They'll just refuse it. Um, once again, dwarf boa stays small. All right, now this is a very special snake. When this was produced in 2018, this little male, I didn't even know what it was, to be honest with you. I thought it was just a hypo onyx or hypo super onyx. It turns out, I'm almost positive, Frank Nutt and I are both positive, this is a super onyx, because you can see it has, it's patternless, essentially, or very, very close to patternless. That, that, that's why it's super onyx. That's for sure, and it's blood. This was the first super onyx blood I believe ever produced in the world at the time. Now there's, there's, there's probably Frank has produced some now, but unbelievable looking color. Now you can see that red, if you look at the belly, I mean a lot of red in that snake. That blood with the super onyx gene really, really mixes well and I had to hold this guy back. I almost sold him, thank God I didn't because then I, re I realized after a couple, about six months that he was actually um, blood and super onyx. If he would have had the hypo gene in him, he would have been fire engine red for sure. So this guy will go with, I was going to try to breed him this year. He probably was ready. Um, he just was so small to put him in with the, the, the bigger boas. It was just like, I don't know, I want to give him a little more time. So with the dwarf boas, you're not going to be plugging them into your program after a year or a year and a half. You're probably going to have to wait for the males two and a half years for them to really mature because they're so small and they're so little that they just, they just need a little bit more time. But if you're patient, the dwarf boa projects can really pay off. I mean, this guy is exquisite. I really hope this season I can make another one of these guys with the hypo gene, because I can't even imagine what a, what a bloody super onyx would look like. But uh, I have some idea, because I've seen it in Frank Nutt's collection. So once again, super onyx blood boa. This next snake is not a, an onyx, okay? But I wanted to show it to you because it's exquisite. This is what I believe to be, it's definitely a blood, and I believe it to be a hypo blood, which we call, you know, uh, a bloody salmon. Okay, you can call it that. Um, but it, this is a hypo blood that I'm 100% sure is also Honduran T positive. Look at that belly. So we also call this an El Diablo. It's actually a hypo El Diablo. So we have the hypo gene, the blood gene, and the Honduran T positive. Like I said, the Honduran T positive just has so much color to it. This snake is exquisite. This is a 2019. Um, I believe I am going to put this up for sale, as crazy as it sounds, although I might keep it. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to list this for sale, though, because I, I, I can't keep everything. But look at that belly. I mean, that is, if you like red snakes and you like red snakes that don't grow too big, this snake, I guarantee you, I have, I have one actually like this that I've already produced uh, two years ago, and that's the reason I'll probably sell this. It stays this color. I'm going to show it to you right after this, but this is exquisite. This little baby, though, however, eats really, really small fuzzy mice still. It's so tiny, you gotta, you got to really baby it with the food until it starts, you know, getting to that point where it's what I call a bulletproof, and that's at about a year old. These dwarfs just need a little bit more care. All right, I had to show it to you. This is that snake bigger. Hypo blood Honduran T-positive. Look at this girl that I held back. She is probably, next year she will be breeding. She has not lost any color. If anything, she's gotten lighter, I think. She's gotten way lighter. Not, look at that, purples and reds. I mean, exquisite. If you want a snake that looks like this, you buy that little baby and you're gonna get this um, as it gets older. This girl is one of my favorite snakes. Once again, no onyx in here, but produced by the same mother who was an onyx. I just didn't get lucky enough and hit the onyx gene, even though the father and the mother were both onyx. Um, she's also 66% head blood and 66% head annery. Just exquisite looking. This is about as nice as it gets. 
if you're looking for a boa. And she's, you know, she's not going to get that much bigger than this. This is like almost adult. This is adult size. I mean, she'll get a little bigger by next year. But once again, she lives in a, in a ball python tub. And she's got a great temperament. She's an awesome eater now. I mean, I could feed her a medium rat. You know, I could probably even give her a large one if I want. I give her a medium rat every other week or every third week or something like that. And that's good enough for her. And like I said, hopefully we'll see her breed. And I just love those purples. Oh, my God. I hope the camera can capture those. She's got like a, like a, like a brownish red tongue, too, which is pretty cool. From the T-positive in her. And finally, I can't wait to show you this. This is the luck of the gods right here. This is every gene I could ever want in a snake right here, uh, with maybe an extra one. This is a hypo superonyx blood Honduran T positive aneurytheristic type 2. We hit every single gene. Uh, the odds were astronomical. This snake almost looks white. She almost looks albino. Look at those black eyes from the blood gene and the onyx. I mean, this snake has just got no color. It's like someone just completely sucked all the red and all the color out of her. And once again, she's almost albino-ish looking. It almost looks like she has the, an azanthic gene in her because there's like, there's nothing. It's just like, like this whitish beige color. And look at that, look at that face and head. Look at the black eyes with that beautiful head. If this didn't have anury gene in it, if the anury gene had, if I had missed on that, Think about how red this snake would be. This snake would be ridiculously red because of all the genes, because of the superonics, the hypo, the Honduran T positive in the blood. Uh, the anery gene just stripped out the, the red. <laughs> and, and it's still, it, it looks white almost, this snake. And it's getting whiter as it gets bigger. And you know what? I want to, I want to tell you guys, I'm not afraid to admit when I screw up, I had her sister, who's a little smaller. And I, I usually put, you know, live mice in with these guys. And for some reason, I don't know, my kids were going crazy one day. And I had to actually go over to the house. And I forgot until the next day. And the mouse killed the sister when she was a lot smaller. And that just goes to show you cannot leave, you know, mice in overnight, especially with young, small snakes that are, that are vulnerable. Um, it was a huge error on my part. Thank God. I didn't lose both of them because I'll never make that mistake again. Believe me, as snake breeders, you're going to make a lot of dumb mistakes. I have, and I know all of us have, and I, I regretted that. I, I wanted to kill myself for doing that, really. It was, it was a terrible, terrible mistake. But this snake, luckily, she made it. She's alive, and she will eventually go into my breeding projects down the road, probably three years off at this point. But look at that. What a beauty. And, uh, you know, you can make something like this as well. I mean, there's, that's the potential here. The, the dream this year would be to make this without the anery gene and make a super crazy red snake, because I love red boas, and I love small red boas too. <laughs> so hopefully we can make the Super Onyx Honduran T positive hypo blood this year. Frank made it. Frank, congratulations. Yours looks amazing. I'm looking to make one as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Um, it was Onyx Boa Day here at Muscle Serpents Daily. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully I got you interested in the project. And if you are interested, I do have a couple of Onyx uh, for sale for certain this year. I have two females that should go. If they both go, we're going to have a lot more Onyx than I have had in the past available. Uh, I haven't even, I don't really even list the Onyx Boas. I just kind of do them through these videos. People contact me and that's how I sell them. So Contact me if you are interested because we do have a couple available next year. Once again, well, this coming season, we should have a lot more. It's an exciting project. The dwarf boas. It doesn't get much better than that. Say goodbye. Hey, make sure you subscribe, guys. You know what to do. Hit that like button. Turn on your notifications. And guess what? We'll see you back 